Coinbase versus the banks. We've talked about this before, and Coinbase right now offering 4% yield on USDC. Of course, here's what we know about USDC. It's owned and backed by a company called Circle. USDC is the premier stablecoin option for any and all Coinbase users. And we know a little bit more about its reserves than we do the uh, only other stablecoin that's higher by market cap than USDC. Of course, that's Tether. There's been a lot of things said about Tether in the past. Is it legit or is it not, right? That's really the big dilemma. And we don't know for sure if you know there's actually backing where they say there is. But with USDC, it's a little bit different, right? Because we have a company that backs it. We have Circle. Uh, and that's the premier stablecoin, by the way, of the Solana blockchain. That was announced uh, in the last couple of years. But Coinbase offering this yield right now on USDC, this was something that was running rampant, but the yield was like 15 to 20% on some platforms back in 2021. If you remember, Crypto.com used to have crazy, crazy staking yield on USDC and other stables, and Ethereum and Bitcoin. They since backed that down when we went from bull market to bear market. But the reason why there's been so much chatter around stablecoin regulation is this headline exactly. Now, this article coming out from BlockWorks, great platform. I want to dive into some of the specifics here and what this really means and what's going to happen with USDC and USDT. These are the two major stablecoins that uh, basically run the cryptocurrency market, right? When people swap in and out of different uh, cryptos, they're, they're swapping into one of the two, right? One of the two. And Again, there's been a lot said about this. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. We're just going to try to tackle it and dive into it a little bit, talk about some of the scenarios that could play out. And I thought BlockWorks did a really good job uh, kind of breaking this down. So Coinbase said Wednesday that Coinbase Advanced, which is its trading platform aimed at more sophisticated traders, basically traders who are trading a lot more money, uh, they're going to be offering them up to 4% rewards on USDC when they hold it on Coinbase or on any USDC uh, basically used in open orders. Right now, I think it's around 2.5% to any Coinbase user. Uh, Coinbase launched 4% rewards on USDC for all Coinbase customers on June 15th. Ooh, I checked that. Um, they actually, okay, I didn't even know that. They changed it up. Uh, as of June 15th, it's 4% rewards. Adding the caveat that the rate is subject to change and can vary. Okay, so that's, I'll have to double check that. Maybe it's already changed. I've seen it at 2.5%. I've seen it at 3% here just in the last year. But it doesn't really change anything. The bigger story here is why keep your money in a bank when you can get it in USDC and earn more for your money? If your money's sitting idle, don't you want that money earning the most it possibly could? That's why people used high yielding platforms. Now, some of those platforms went under. Take Celsius, for example. That did not go as planned, right? So you have to be careful with what platform you're using. Uh, you know, obviously, Coinbase has been around. It's a publicly traded company, uh, and it's a little bit different. But according to the FAQ article, Coinbase doesn't lend out the USD, USDC in its customers' accounts, claiming it has no rights to use those funds, meaning they're not lending you that crypto. There's an actual backing one-to-one. -one. It says USDC Rewards is a loyalty program that's funded with Coinbase's own funds. Again, one-to-one -one reserve backing. The program is designed to incentivize more of our customers, they say, to use Coinbase services to store their USDC. Smart business move, by the way. The 4% yield offering is significant because it rivals what major banks give in terms of APY for their high-yield savings accounts. Okay, I currently have a high-yield savings account, and I think mine is right around 3.8%, something like that, right? Apple savings account, which launched in April, and it's tied to its credit card, offers 4.15% APY. There's a reason. You, you see the trend here? Apple and USDC, they're coming in right above what the banks will offer. And according to Bankrate, which tracks and rates uh, financial products, there are a handful of savings accounts that have actually surpassed Coinbase's 4%. Capital One has an account like that, like Apple, offering, again, 4.15%. Coinbase Lend, a program that faced a lot of regulatory hurdles, was ultimately abandoned due to threats of legal action by the SEC, had initially planned to offer traders a 4% APY on USDC as a reward as well. Although the program was announced in 2021, it was later than canceled. So Lend, unlike what Coinbase is offering now, would have loaned out your USDC in customer accounts. That's different, right? Then you're just betting that they'll have your money when you want it, right? No guarantee, especially when we hit tumultuous times like we did last year. 
Uh, and if you're a borrower, well, there's no guarantees. That's, that's really not your money, right? If users had chose to participate in the program, this old program, uh, there was a potential risk that their funds would no longer be held under Coinbase's custody. And at some point, when you go to cash out, you're not going to get the money that you say you should. Uh, this is a wholly separate offering, though, from Lend, as USDC holders on Coinbase receive these rewards simply for holding USDC in their accounts. And again, what makes this different is there's a one-to-one -one backing. I just think it's interesting and fascinating to kind of see both Apple and Coinbase kind of rivaling these big banks. It's going to be really interesting to see what governments come in and say or do about this and uh, just how these issues are tackled uh, in the upcoming months and years, hopefully months. Hopefully we can figure it out sooner rather than later. But we'll be keeping tabs on it. It's a story that's going to be ongoing. Stable coin, stable coins, what's going to happen with them? What does that look like in the future of uh, crypto? If there's one thing we do know over the last few months, Bitcoin is safe, right? Fidelity just recently refiled for their spot Bitcoin ETF. BlackRock is getting in a new exchange with Fidelity and Charles Schwab and all the big dogs are coming to crypto. Institutional adoption for Bitcoin is happening. Now the big questions are, what happens to stable coins? I think that's the next big point, right? And then Ethereum. So we'll be keeping tabs on it for you right here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you.